today with Dr. John Radcliffe. Um, we are in Bali and um, we will be talking about his new book that will be released soon and I would just like to run through a few questions with you about yourself and about the piece that will be released soon. Okay, far away. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about you John. How did it all start? What's your background? Um, well, I, I started uh, studying Chinese medicine in the 1980s and I studied with Professor Wong in Melbourne for about nine years and then I was running my own practice uh, in Richmond probably from about 93 until um, 2005 and that's sort of, roughly that's sort of how it all, all got going. Okay, and um, so what book have you written? What's the title? Tell me more about the book. Okay, so I wrote the first book was in about 95. I wrote a book called Sugar Science, and uh, which was about controlling your blood sugar levels and uh, through the food that you ate. And that book was just basically for patients so they could uh, just come in and I could just give them the book because I was, I was spending about an hour with each person sort of explaining the same thing and walking them through it. So, so it was sort of, it's just in a book I could basically just, you know, they just take the book, go away and read it. Really. And um, then the book became really popular and then publishers came along and they wanted to publish it but they changed the name to Low Carb Made Easy. So most people know the book as Low Carb Made Easy but yeah, originally it was Sugar Science. Okay. And is that the only book you have written or you've written more books? We um, we'll wrote another two books on uh, after that. I think um, GI Feel Good was the next one. And um, then there was Meals Made Easy, that was, a, that was more like a recipe book. Okay. And then we had um, uh, like a, a pocket guide, so people could basically, like when they go to the supermarket, they had this little pocket guide that they could tell you what, what foods to buy and things like this. And um, how many people do you think have followed that device? Well, I think probably the book itself sold around about 300,000 copies. Uh, but I think with the e-books and so on, I think it's closer to half a million. And the books went all over the world and they were translated in different language, languages, even translated into Chinese. So I can't even read it. Uh, God only knows what it says, but you know, I just have to trust. <laughs> so tell me a little bit more about the content of the book. What is it about? Uh, well, <clears throat> it's about controlling blood sugar levels and uh, basically controlling insulin because insulin is, is this key to, uh, to many things in the body, but in particular it's basically what the body does with the energy that in the food that we're absorbing. Insulin will basically determine whether or not we're going to hang on to that energy or, but, and make us put on weight, or it's going to allow us to basically get rid of that excess. So is it good for diabetics then as well? Or? Yeah, well, amazingly, uh, of course, because it's using glycemic index, which mm -hmm. is um, was very uh, like in Australia, they were doing a lot of research in the 90s. There was just a basically the University of New South Wales was doing all the research on the glycemic index. And so, when I started helping people with their food, of course, um, people came forward who were diabetic and and started following the book. And uh, I was amazed when people told me that they had actually stopped using the insulin and had actually gone for months, months and months and months and hadn't used insulin at all, which, which just shows that the, the diet is really spot on with keeping blood sugar levels under control. Mm -hmm. okay. So it is about insulin, but isn't it also about fat in a diet? Yeah, well actually, when you're, I mean everybody sort of has heard about low carb, you know, and low carb has, uh, low carb has now evolved, like, you know, we're still using the same principles, nothing's really changed, but now low carb has evolved into the paleo diet, and as most people would know, paleo involves eating fats, oils, meats, you know, cheeses, things like this, but the thing is, when you control your blood sugar levels, your body actually can't absorb any of those, any, like, you know, when we were told not to eat fat and so on, but, uh, it just basically, without insulin, fat can't be absorbed. So you can eat these really rich foods and um, lovely meals, 
and actually what happens is that the, those meals actually help you to lose weight. Mm. So, you know, you could get up in the morning and have bacon and eggs and, you know, people would be horrified. You're just sitting there like eating bacon and eggs and, you know, with hollandaise sauce or something like this. <laughs> but what's, what, what's actually happening is you're actually doing it because it, cause it's helping you to lose some weight. Some of my like patients, you know, they make like a big lamb lasagna or something like that, like super rich food. I mean, you don't have to eat like this all the time, you know, but, but they'll, you know, they'll go to the office and, you know, everyone will get like their salads and, you know, start nibbling and things like this and they'll just like heat this thing up and be like, oh my God, you know, just to see no matter how much I eat, I just can't put on weight, you know, and everyone hates them, but, you know, that's what happens, the weight just drops off. So the whole low-fat topic is misunderstood then? Well, you know, uh, we have, have really seen this, uh, the, the truth about the whole low-fat um, story came out maybe last year in Australia. There was a really interesting article by ABC News, it's called The Heart of the Matter. It's a two-part two -part series on quantum, um, which is a science show. And it's peer reviewed and it's, it's by doctors and scientists and so on. But they, they really got down into the story about how we ended up with this, uh, the whole history of the, the, of the low fat, why, why you know, we suddenly started uh, trying to get fat out of our diets and so on. So what we do know is that information actually wasn't correct. And that it's actually more harmful to, to be trying to get like using things like margarines and um, polyunsaturated oils actually do more harm to the body. And like I said, if you're eating things that are high in fat, well, if the body doesn't absorb the fat, then you shouldn't worry about it. You mm -hmm. can enjoy those foods because they're tasty, mm -hmm. you know, and still enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So what is the foundation of your program then? Uh, the basic principles is simply, um, it's, it's a formula that I developed to basically get people down to a point where all the energy in their body, like it's basically in the body you've got uh, glucose is really what our body runs on. So in the body um, there's a type of uh, syrupy glucose called glycogen and that's in the muscles and basically in the, in the liver. So what happens is when you stop putting this excess of energy into the body with the carbohydrates that you're eating, where you're just basically eating, like the carbohydrates are not high in energy, but they're sort of moderate or, or um, you know, like low GI foods and so on. So what happens is the glycogen in the liver actually slowly runs out. It takes about four days and then the glycogen basically just gets used up. So it's like the gas, you know, in, your, in the petrol tank, you know, just drains away. And then the body goes, okay, so I'm not getting this fuel in my, in my diet every day, so what am I going to do? You know, so the body basically just sits there and goes, okay, am I starving? Because if you were, say you just cut your calories down, mm. and say you're eating like 500 calories a day, your body is very quickly understanding that, that you know, well, something's gone wrong. You know, like yesterday I was eating 2,000 calories, now I'm in 5,000, 500. So there's a problem. Mm. So the body will automatically slow down the metabolic rate. And the one thing it wants to hang on to is fat. Mm. because this is the one thing that's going to keep you alive mm. for the longest because this famine that you you've created is you know like it's it's basically got a duration so I mean the person can go for for weeks and months actually as long as they get water but mm. without food you know and they'll stay alive mm. so what happens then when you actually cut down the, the carbohydrate but you actually people are still getting protein and and um, these sort of rich foods in the diet, the body goes, okay, well, this is obviously no fat famine. We've got plenty of food. So I'm going to use the fat now as for my energy that I need. Uh, and, and so what happens is basically that fat just gets thrown into the fire. So the effect is that people just start to drop the weight whilst they're eating, you know, eating uh, like three square meals a day happily, not really worrying about the calories at all. You know. That's mm. how. It, that's kind of how it works. Yeah. <laughs> so, what kind of meals would you be looking at? Could you give me some examples about meals that are, you can eat? Well, all the meals, um, the recipes are always a combination of carbohydrate and protein. But the type of carbohydrates that we're using are the ones that are either moderate or or a low GI. So, like low GI is like your salads and you know tomato, zucchini, eggplant, cauliflower, broccoli. Like they're all low GI mm. food. 
So you'd mix those with the proteins, you know, like the meats, the cheeses, you know, the fish, chicken, things like this. God, like there's, um, there's this uh, chicken curry soup, which I mean, like uh, to die for. It's it uh, it's one of my favourites, you know. Like, uh, and I wish I could make it in Bali, you know, since I'm missing it so much, just almost as much as I'm missing lamb. God Almighty. But anyway, so <coughs> so you get. Um, let me try and remember. Yeah, so you get chicken breast. You put it in the in the wok. You cook it up with um, red red curry paste. Yeah. Right. Then you take it out. Bit of oh, and a um, little bit of sesame oil. Right. Then you take it out. Put it in a blender. Like get it all chopped up in a food processor. Okay. Then you get chicken stock, which you've made. There's like you have to make the chicken stock. You can't buy it off the shop because it's always got flour and yeah. sugar in it. Mm. So you make your own chicken stock. Then you pour the chicken stock back into the pan and you put like Philadelphia cream cheese, like one of those big <laughs> wow. blocks of those cheese in there. And uh, I think yeah, things cream cheese, cherry tomatoes, coriander, and then you put the chicken back in and you just sort of like fold it all through and so on. And like that's low carb. Wow. That's a, that's a low carb meal that'll make you lose weight. I love it. And that recipe's in your book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's in one of the books. But, you know, so it's basically just a combination of, of um, the right sort of carbohydrates and the protein. It's not really, like, you know, as you know, you, you can't just eat protein. Like, if, you just, mm. if you're just eating protein all the time, then eventually your body will become acidic. Mm. So, so although you get this effect, which is um, called ketosis, but the body is not becoming acidic because of the amount of carbohydrates in the meals. So, my body is not absorbing the actual fat then that I'm eating? How does it happen? What can I do for my body not to absorb more fat? Well, the thing is, what, what happens is when you eat fats, the liver emulsifies, or the, the gallbladder creates the bile that emulsifies the fats and it actually allows the fat to actually go into your bloodstream. So the, the fat actually moves around the bloodstream for about five hours. And during that five hours, what it's doing is it's waiting to be absorbed. And what it needs to drive the fat into the, from the blood vessels into the actual tissue is insulin. So it's basically like it just drives around the block waiting for something to happen. Yeah. And because insulin never shows up, then after a while, after the, the five hours, which is um, roughly it's five hours, the body goes, okay, you know, you've had your chance, now that's over, and the fat just basically goes back through the through the bile ducts and just goes back into you, comes out the, comes out the other end. Yeah, right, yeah. okay. And so what can people expect using your program? And well, what, what happens is when people first um, start doing it, well, they go through their sugar withdrawals. That's when you realise really how much sugar you're putting into your system. And it's usually for the first four days that you, you sort of feel this uh, inertia. And then your food cravings go. Because what you find is like people have comfort foods. So they, they like, you know, like they might eat bread, you know, like they love fresh bread, or they might like, um, you know, I don't know corn chips or something like that. I mean, I always used to like corn chips for some reason, but, you know, that was sort of like my comfort food. Uh, they'll, they'll have something, and, you know, I mean, it could be the overt sweets like chocolate and things like that, you know. So what happens is after that four days, the body goes, okay, so this food's kind of gone because actually we've been eating it every day now. Mm. Now it's gone. So we understand what gone means. So it's, mm. there's, it's, you know, there's foods in our diet, like normally we had foods which were seasonal. So instead of like, you know, being a caveman and, you know, going, God, I wish I could eat banana. Like, hey, does anyone want, want a banana around here? Do you feel like banana? And everyone's just going, like, shut up. It's winter, mm. right? Yeah. The body, you just, you lose the association, mm. right, to the food. Yeah. So the point is, besides the anecdote, <laughs> all right, the actual, the point is that the body, the food cravings go. Mm. So you actually have a different perspective of the food. You don't feel this attachment to the food. You know, when you see it, you sort of go, God, why do I eat that? Mm -hmm. You know, but it is important actually in the first few days to actually get rid of all that food out of the, out of, the um, out of your house. Yeah. Yeah, because people, when they see it, you know, they have this uh, emotional attachment to mm -hmm. it. Anyway, so what happens is usually within the first um, first week, people drop the most weight. Yeah. So, I've, I mean, I've had pa people drop three, you know, sometimes four kilos in, in seven days. Wow. Just it comes off so dramatically. 
because the, the body is not ready for it. Mm. It's like, um, you know, like if I'm, if I'm giving you every day, I walk in here and I say, you know, here, Aileen, here's, here's a thousand bucks, yeah. right? And you're going to like, what am I going to do with this? Like, yeah. you know, well, are you crazy? And stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. And so I come back tomorrow, here's another thousand, here's another thousand, right? Well, eventually I'm going to walk in here and you're going to have like a new coat and you're going to have all the beautiful stuff and things like that. And you're just going to be just, yep, yeah, where's my money? You know, and you just be taking it all the time. Right, so what happens with the body is the body is, it's like this, right? We're going like, okay, here's a thousand calories, right? And the body's just sort of going, what am I going to do with this, right? But after a while it's going like, where's my food, right? So it's using this energy very poorly, like very sloppy sort of way, right? So all of a sudden, when that is cut off, the body's not ready for it. So it drops the most energy because it, it, it has to adjust to this change in diet. So you usually see the big results uh, earlier on. Mm. But what happens is you get the dramatic drops and then basically people can actually go to free fall and the weight can just keep going off. Mm. But the rule of thumb that I always tell people is make it one kilo a week. Mm. So if the expectation is a kilo a week, then that's, that's probably going to be the closest because you do get, sometimes you can like you get little reality, uh, not reality checks, but sort of ecology checks yeah. where the body sort of will just sort of plateau for a little while. Just sort of like, you know, are, are we still good here? And then off it goes again. Mm. So is it a diet or is it a program how to eat proper? Is it something that I finish and stop when I, once I've reached my goal or? Well, I specifically designed this to help people uh, achieve this weight loss. Mm. and. And then once a person has, has are satisfied with the amount of weight that they've lost, then there's another phase with, where they introduce other types of carbohydrates in with the food. And it's not, you know, it's not as restrictive. I mean, usually we encourage people not to drink alcohol and things like this, you know. So, you know, then they can introduce the wine and things like this come back into the diet and so on. And so that's just the maintenance phase. But if they kind of overdo it and they start finding the weight is creeping up, they can just go back into it again and, and the weight will just come off. Every time, like, you know, you can, like me, I've been doing it for 20 years. So, you know, maybe 15 years ago I lost so much weight, I was the same weight as when I was an 18 year old, you know. And then, you know, when I'm in my 40s, I do, you know, I think, God, is this going to work again? I mean, you know, I was 30 before, you know, and then all of a sudden the same thing happens. It always works the same way. So really what it is, it's a knowledge. Like I, I really, really want to give people this knowledge and understanding about this, uh, this technique and understanding about the food and then understanding about that when you eat this sort of food, this is going to, it's going to make your body unhappy. You know? And when you eat this sort of food, you're going to feel good and you, and you never worry about your weight. Okay. So where, where can people find you? Well, we've got, um, naturally we're on Facebook, um, Low Carb Made Easy, there's a, there's a Facebook group and, and, you know, I try and check in with everybody and sort of, you know, give them new recipes and so on. Um, I do uh, I do one-on-one -on -one with people on Skype, so people can, anywhere in the world, um, you know, we can sit down together and talk for an hour and I can coach people uh, and, and talk them through it, if, you know, and so on. The, the book... Um, the Low Carb Made Easy book is on Google Books. It's mm -hmm. it was actually number one for like it's one of the number one e-books for, for about three or four days at one point. Like, oh, you know, wow. Hooray! Um, and the new book, you know, when when the new book comes out, uh, you know, maybe in the next few months, like that'll that'll also come out. It's called Ask Me the Ask Me What the Title Is. You know, you're gonna love it. Yeah. So what is the title? What's next? Tell me. Fatso's Big Day Out. <laughs> wow. Okay. So what is that about? <laughs> what is that about? <laughs> so, yeah, it's a story, you know, it's a, actually a story about a person who meets, meets this mysterious, gets a mysterious note slipped under the door, you know, and, oh, wow. and it invites, you know, it's sort of like old style, um, you know, one day only, you know, sort of greatest show on earth and things like this, you know, and, brew, and it's for you, like only you, and, and they just think it's a joke, you know, and then they're going to work the next day and, and sure enough, there's this person who's waiting for them, you know. And, and so they, they just follow and, and uh, end up in this, seeing this show, you know, this incredible show which basically explains the whole thing about food and, and with, you know, like acrobats and things like this, you know, it's, it's oh, wow. just, you know, I just thought I'd like to just come out, come out just from something unique, you know, yeah. because sometimes people like the technical stuff, yeah. but I think, 
you know, also children, like maybe a parent wanted to help their children understand, mm. you know, because childhood obesity is, is I mean, even in Bali, like, it's amazing to see these really overweight children as well. So I just thought maybe it's something that adults could read, but also um, maybe an adult, a child could read it and be, just understand about food at, you know, at an early age. So it's knowledge delivered in a, in a fun way, is it? In a story. Yeah. yeah a bit of mystery and, and sort of surprise. And, yeah. I love it. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you for and, having me. Yeah, okay. nice to meet you. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> She brought me to the east, she brought me to the west, but she's a gal.